Hi, I'm Sam. Just kidding. I am Sam's boss, Jung. Here today, we're going to talk about job rotation. Okay? So uh, it's a very important security concept called job rotation. You don't want to keep one person doing the same thing over and over again because when you do that, what happens is that they find a way to cheat the system. Thank you for that intro, Jung, and thank you for taking up more room than necessary with the header. So what are we going to do on Quidnet today? We're going to break down a type of question that a lot of test takers struggle with. Why? Because it's complicated, it's long, and it's a scenario based. But I'm here to tell you what you do when you see a question like this is you make it as simple as possible. So you pull out the stuff that matters, you try to reword the question to make it simple in a way that makes sense to you. And also, of course, we want to eliminate answer choices. So let's try to do all that with this question. So what's going on here? Well, an attacker is attempting HTTP tunneling. Now, what's that? That's when we try to disguise data of a different type or kind and trying to send it out or in port 80, which is for HTTP traffic, right? So why would we want to target kind of that port? Well, we know it's always open. Why is it always open? Because HTTP traffic, of course, is web traffic. So our organization is not going to outright block it. So we know it's always open. It's always an avenue for us to get bad stuff in or stuff out. Now, the problem is it's not working. The attacker is being blocked by something. Now, they also notice that normal, legitimate HTTP traffic is working just fine. So what's going on here? A very easy way to kind of just, again, simplify this question is to say, okay, there must be something hanging out at that port that can actually look at the data type. It's not being fooled, right? It's not being fooled by the disguise on the outside. It can actually see through it and it being exposed by looking at the actual contents of the packet. So to kind of help sketch this out, very simply, we know that like a packet's going to uh, looks something like this. We got the header, we have a trailer, and then in the middle, the part that really matters, we have the data. And the, some type of firewall is looking here and saying you're not allowed, allowed out or, or in, right? So that's the easier question. And if you think about what we just did, we just said, went from all that to saying, what type of firewall can look at the data? What kind of firewall is going to make decisions on this part of the packet, not necessarily this part? Right? Isn't that a lot easier? So before we even try to answer that question, another thing we could do is try to eliminate answer choices. So right off the bat, you should notice, well, two things. The first is that there's no A, B, C, and D. Well, that's because most modern testing interfaces are moving towards where you have like four bubbles. So there's no more A, B, C, and D. So here on Quidno, we're trying to keep up with the times, right? So I'll try to say one, two, three, four. So speaking of numbers, the second thing you should notice is that one stands out from the other, 443. So 443 is not the right port number, right? 443 is, well, it's a, it's a great area code in Maryland, my area code, crab cakes, football, and se secure HTTP traffic. That's what Maryland does. So if we were looking at like secure traffic, then it'd be 443, but we're not. It's just normal, that's gonna be port 80. So don't even worry about what's on this side, we can already get rid of one. Our job's a little bit easier. So, here's a way to think about it. What type of firewall is smart enough to make decisions based off of that part of the packet? Another way to ask that, if you know the OSI stack, what firewall hangs out towards the top of the OSI stack? Why does that make sense? Because it's more intelligent. It's smarter up there. It can make decisions based on the data or the type of traffic a little higher up. So let's think about the first one, stateless firewall. We know that's gonna be like layer three, which is pretty low. It's not intelligent because what does it make decisions off of? This part, not that part. It makes decisions based on IP addresses, right? A pre-configured list of approved IPs, that's all it can make a decision on. It's not the first one. Now, the third one, stateful, that's interesting, right? Because stateful is certainly more intelligent, but it's not intelligent enough. Why? What is it making decisions based off? The state of what? 
the state of the communication or connection in the TCP three-way handshake. If you're not part of an established TCP three-way handshake, that stable firewall sees it as, as suspicious, it's just going to drop it. So TCP, what layer is that? That's layer four. We got a little higher, but we're not there yet. So that leaves us with the last one, proxy. A proxy firewall is an extremely intelligent firewall that can inspect the data, right? It can inspect the traffic. Another way to think about it is like a proxy firewall is those very intense TSA agents where you put your bag through and they actually open it up, right? Something called, sometimes called in the security world, deep packet inspection. It can look at the packet, it can look at the data and make a decision based off of that. And this of course is gonna be hanging out at layer seven, so that's why it makes sense. Application firewall would have worked as well, but of course we didn't even get there because it was port 443, a great number, but the wrong port. So think about what we just did. We went from a very complex question to a very simple one, and that simplicity helped us find our way to the right answer. So anytime you're dealing with a question that is long, scenario-based, or complex, remember the great strategy, reword the question in your own words, and that's gonna help you find your way to the right answer. So, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week on Quitnut.